I'm going to be dying a lock style wet fly, and in this case it's an Irish mayfly. And this is a slight variant of the, of the McPhail mayfly, the fly that was named after myself. Basically what the difference really is, uh, is the body. I've used a raffia for the body. Raffia is very popular. And this is a synthetic raffia, which I prefer. I just really, the natural is okay, but in the synthetic I really, I feel it's, I can get a nice shape in the body. And plus a nice colour. It goes quite translucent when it's wet. But anyway, that's, uh, this one's a yellow. You can get them all different colours. Now, that's the one that's got a chartreuse rib on the body. A variant of it again would be to have a, a red rib on this Chinese. In this case it's a Chinese red. It's a unifloss. It slightly changes, it changes the fly itself and you'll find a lot of the mayfly patterns you have slight variants and especially a red rib. Now the hook I'm using is a Camasan B175 size 10. Thread I'm just going to use a light olive in 8 and uni. I'm simply going to run a layer of thread down the shank and basically stop in line with the bar by the hook. Remove the waist piece. Now for the tail, this is a got the pheasant tail. Now it's been dyed chartreuse. You'll see the colour mainly in the back. You'll see the colour just about that, just about there. And it actually changes as long as it's light enough the, the feather, the natural brown, to take the colour. You'll get this. It's a lovely colour. It's like an olivey colour. It works extremely well. Or you can have it a bit deeper, which I like as well. If you that, if you get a deeper hack or a, a darker, sorry, uh, pheasant tail, it's a different colour slightly. And that again was on one of the originals. Now all I've done here is taken off a good half dozen fibres. Body length, at least twice the length of the shank, say the shank. So there's one, two, for the tail. And that's your measure. Just a couple of turns to hold. And set it on top. You can flare it out if you want. Pheasant tail's not the strongest fibre in the world, but it works extremely well on these flies. Now I'm using this as a measure, because I've got a body hackle and then a front hackle. And you need at least about 3 mil or so at the front. Now I've got my red, Chinese, red unifloss, which I'm going to offer it again, full length of the body. At this point, touch and turns, run your thread up, tying these in. Just run it all the way up. Get this point here, and then you want to start to come back down. But if you're going to come back down, you as well tying something in. Now if you get your raffia and open it, just spread it open like this. And you could use scissors and cut it. But what I normally do is just tear a bit off. It tears reasonably easy. So you just tear it at the top and then you run it all the way down. And then you get a length. Now, I like to moisten it. Just run it through. Just wet it. Makes it much more pliable and easier to use. And then, just catch it on the top, on the side here. Just pull it into the area where you want to start. And then run down. Now I'm going to stop slightly short. Basically I want it to be start to get some sort of taper. Now are looking about, about 3 or 4 turns short. And then bring the thread back up. This will help build the taper in the body for you. Just run into there. And then just open up the raffia. Just be careful at this point. And then basically sort of overlap the turn before, just forming the shape. See that nice tapered shape, carrot shape. And then across your thread, tie it off. And it will dry. It dries quite quick as well. And the colour's really good. Now for the body hackle, this is a grizzle hackle dyed chartreuse. It's not to the stronger side, it's just quite light. It's more like, you could probably get away with a fluorescent yellow. And it actually, it's very good with this, this fly. So watch your floss. Set out of the road. Let's 
catch it on the side, take your thread right down towards the iron back up. And as I say, I've got a good 3 mil there. I like to do a good turn and a half or so there. And then bring your hackle down to the rib itself. Now, really it's a bit, you've really got to spin and hold the hackle at the same time. Spin the floss to tighten it up, make it into a good rope. It makes it much stronger. The colour's more intense. And then we wind it up through turns. Well, there's four, five. That's plenty. Just at the last turn, I draw back any fibre and bring the floss to the front. Catch it with the thread. And again, nice and tight. Bind it down. Take this off. If you have not tight enough for your floss, that not do that. Need a nice tight turns at the back. And again, come down with your thread and back up, just tidying everything up. And there you are. It makes a, a really nice body. Now for the front hackle, I've got a French partridge hackle here dyed. It's a nice yellow. Just draw back the fluff that you don't need. Because I'm going to tie this in by the tip. Just reveal the point of the hackle, the tip of the hackle. Just draw the fibres down either side. And then you can just catch it three or four turns down. You can fold back the point of the hackle. Make sure you don't let this point here go until you've actually grabbed a bit of hold of the tip or the point. Trim it away. And then just a matter of folding the hackle and doing a turn in front of the other. Depending on how heavy you dress, you want to fly. The hackle for the, the, the fibres you're looking at least to get to the back of the hook. Sometimes you find these are, they can be really well heavily, not heavily dressed, but well dressed. It just depends on the type of fly or the type of fishing you want to do. You could have some sparse dressed flies as well as like one like this. But in a good wave, this would be ideal. Now once you've got your hackle on, just bring your thread up beside the stem and tightly run it down to the eye. Now I could fold that back if I wish, just bring the thread over the top. Always keeping the thread nice and tight. You can break it off. You, uh, if you do that you're really neat. A neat cut. And then, like the McMay McPhail may fly, there is no one now. I always put dubbing in the front. I always gave an impression of the dun coming off of the nymph. And then, what I'm using here, this is wing and flash. And a nice bright yellow. Pearl yellow. You could mix it with some nice and a nice olive or something, seals fur or whatever. But I like a bit of flash sometimes. This is one with a bit of bling, a bit of extra. If you feel it's a bit dark sometimes, then try this. And just build up slight head using the, the wing and flash. Bring your thread to the front. Do three or four turns in. Some varnish. Rub it onto the thread. This will make for a, a really strong head if you do that. And then what finish? Four or five turns, and there you are. There's another slight variant of the McPhail Mayfly. And I'm going to lift out the fibres. Just spread them out so you can see what the colours are like. And that's one. There's another variant. Two good flies to have in your box, especially if you're fishing an island when the mayflies coming off. And more so, I would say the done than anything. Mm -hmm.